Hey, I'm here to tell you about Rabbit Hole. I've been talking about this sauce for quite a while now. What makes Rabbit Hole special is that they view bourbon as an artistic expression. Each of their original works of bourbon are made from one-of-a-kind mash bill recipes using specially malted grains. Every Rabbit Hole expression is aged in both charred and toasted barrels. Okay, a lot of people claim, but it ain't true. Including Derringer, Rabbit Hole's expression, award-winning finished bourbon. For this expression, Rabbit Hole has taken their fine weeded bourbon. Aged it again in Pedro Jimenez Sherry Cast from Spain. Aromas of caramel, cherry will lure you in before flavors of dried fruit and sweet wine will have you falling in love. Derringer's perfectly sweet taste profile is the perfect sip to please both new drinkers and whiskey purists and connoisseurs. This award-winning spirit scored a perfect 100 points at the Proof Awards. That's incredible. It won the double gold at the prestigious San Francisco Spirits Award and was named one of the 25 best bourbons of the 21st century by Rob Report. Hey, man, it is good sauce. I like it very much. If you're looking for something new, if you're someone that's tasted a lot of good bourbons and you want to try a little bit something special and different, this Derringer that's finished in these sherry casks is so, so good. Find a bottle near you at rabbitholedistillery.com. That's rabbitholedistillery.com. Or you can go to rabbitholedistillery.com slash drizzly and get $5 off your first order with that promo code rabbit. Rabbitholedistillery.com slash drizzly. $5 off your first order with the promo code rabbit. Drink responsibly. What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. If it's your first time joining the show, welcome to the show. Like it, subscribe it. Leave a comment below for the Al Go Rhythm. We got a boy from over the pond. Jack Whitehall is on the show. What a funny guy. He's on tour right now. Please go see him. Go grab a ticket to go see him. Very smart. Very clever. Very funny. He's a good looking cat too. Huh? It's easy on the eyes. Uh, he's on tour. I'm not, but I do have a special out. Go watch Cheeseburger on Netflix right now. Please go watch it on Netflix. Watch Cheeseburger. Rate it. Tell a friend. Let everyone know what I'm up to making you laugh. So hopefully I'll be back out on the road soon. But for now, enough rambling from me. Let's go to the episode. In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. It's the first time this British lad has graced us, and I hope it's not the last. It's Jack Whitehall, ladies and gentlemen. Cheers. Cheers. We're having a little something something, just a little snifter, a little, little something special oh. for the boy that comes from overseas. Some mm. good Fine jazz. bourbon. Fine, fine oh. bourbon. It's good yeah, stuff, that's right? Really, that's really good stuff. You look good. We've never we've never connected until this moment in life right now. But your long hair is really nice, man. Yeah, I mean, jealous. You I look don't like know. A, it's a real choice, right? It's a choice, but it's a good choice. Yeah. It look you look like a you're you look like a California guy, but you're not. Yeah, I'm having my kind of lockdown moment. You are at, at two years too late. Right. So after COVID is when you decide to grow your hair. Yeah, out. I thought Smart. I'll do that now. Um, <laughs> Every day and, during COVID, you were yeah, shaving, yeah. And cutting <laughs> yeah, your hair, yeah, keeping it really tight, <laughs> yeah. really tidy. And then I was just like, I'm just gonna. You're gonna let it go. Let it go. Just uh, it, also, I think when you have hair like this, it's just a, a marker of being out of work. It's a good way to let people know that you're not working. Or that you're ready to work. Or that you're ready to work. Let's yes. Look at it like it's like that. it's it's like protest. If my agent sees me, uh, the hair is getting longer, then he's not doing his job. See, but it's interesting because you look good. So it look I think you're doing a I think you're doing a reverse psychology. Yeah. You're like, oh, I'm not really working. <laughs> but you are. Yeah, you are, though. No? I'm just putting it out there yeah, well, into, into the I world. Know, you I know. know. Agents, managers, yeah. lawyers, listen up. <laughs> no, but you work enough. You do so much of your own stuff that what's the difference? I mean, you're an accomplished stand up comic uh, who also uh, has shared a career with your father, which I think is insane. Insane. <laughs> it's wild. Yeah. I mean, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Cause most of us have dads either that weren't around or weren't present. Yeah. Right. Uh, or they were, you know, like my stepdad worked in sales. Like if I tried to put him in a part of anything, yeah. bad, 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 <laughs> bad, bad, things content. Would happen. bad content. Yeah. yeah. He would say stuff that we did. We'd have to edit the whole episode. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, there is a fair amount of having to edit stuff out that would be very, very bad if it ended up in the finished program when right. I do stuff with him. And he it, it genuinely, like even more so the older that he gets, it does feel like there is just this like loose cannon that's out there in the ether that could potentially 
like do some real damage to my Doesn't career it? and that I have no good. Con- yeah but like for most comedians it's what's coming out of your mouth that you're worried about and yeah. for me it's that I have this like human hand grenade just wandering around <laughs> and now he has like a platform he's on you know not only is he on all social media but he's often doing like his own stuff now and he's right. doing TV shows without me he's talking about doing a tour who is this like, guy who does insane. he think he is he's well, ditched me you better I mean, get a kickback from that yeah yeah, yeah. L- like your father better kick you back uh, if he starts touring he better kick you back 10% of that. That's You, you, you need yeah. royalties on yeah, that kind I of stuff. I want royalties on that. I don't know who he thinks he is, dude. What did he do for you other than raise you and clothe you and feed you and yeah, put you through right, life? Exactly. Yeah. He's he's he, he's also, um, th- there have been a couple of things like uh, our version of um, Dancing with the Stars got in contact with him. And because the other problem is like he's got my mum behind him who's like pushing him to do more and more stuff because she fucking loves it. Right. And so Dancing with the Stars came and said, you know, would you like to be on this? You'd be the oldest contestant that we've ever had. And he was genuinely talked into considering it by my mum. And then me and my brothers and sisters found out and we literally had to stage an intervention where we went round <laughs> to the house. You're like, you cannot let him do that show. It'll be an absolute like car crash. Yeah, but I like an intervention where it's not about drugs or alcohol. It's all about him being <laughs> yeah, on a reality yeah, show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like everyone's crying and sad, and they're like, <laughs> "Your choices to do a reality show has affected me in the following ways." Just a whole script on why you shouldn't do it. Yeah, but I th- what is it called? It's a, it's the, it's Britain's version, right? Yeah, Strictly Come Dancing. What's it called? It's called Strictly Come Dancing. <laughs> Dude, you yeah, guys make everything. Title of you make everything so wacky. Yeah. It's got to be wacky for some reason. <laughs> Say it again? Yeah, Strictly Come Dancing. <laughs> what? It's, uh, it's, it's Why like wouldn't they just call old-timey, it? Old-timey, doesn't it? It is. Yeah. It sounds like everyone, it sounds like the, <laughs> it sounds like pre-war. Yeah. Like, na, 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 It's yeah. so stupid to me. Yeah. You guys Very have sweet. to make things cute uh, and wacky. I think a part of the British sense of humor is that you guys are always in on the joke. Yeah. Americans have this thing where we don't like to have pie on our face. Yeah. You guys invented that shit. Yeah. It's just the best. I do like that, that you're, uh, and this is just, not just the title of that show. I'm just saying, in general, my favorite thing about British comedy is it's okay that they're part of the joke, Mm. where culturally there's something about us that like, we always want to look cool or we always want to look like we're just a little bit ahead of it. Yeah. Which you can do in British comedy, but um, they're in it with you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always love that. Like, I've always, I, one of my favorite shows uh, lately is uh, What We Do in the Shadows. And mm. because I love Matt Barry. I've, oh, I, he's hilarious. I think he's one of the funniest people. And I, I say this almost every episode because I'm trying to get Matt's attention because yeah. I have a crush on the guy. Yeah, yeah. But I just think he's brilliant, man. I've always loved, uh, like, Toast of London was one of my favorite shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just, his rhythm was something I always caught on to because yeah. he didn't mind looking a fool. Yeah. I was like, he's so comfortable with yeah, himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he looks the dumbest, yeah, it sh- is the funniest to me. Yeah, I just I I love him. I love yeah, his he style. Can, and he is literally someone that could read out the phone book, and it would be funny. Well, he did on and, the, on that yeah. show, right? He read yeah, out yeah. of a. Uh, he read the uh, the train stops oh, every yeah, train yeah, stop, yeah, yeah. and it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, so good. He did my friend's wedding. He was the he adjudicated my friend's wedding, we really? and they got him to do it, which like was lovely and you know like great that he did it, but. And it, it was a lovely ceremony, but there is a problem when you are that funny that even when he was trying to do the serious bits, everyone was cracking up because they yeah. thought he was doing a bit because he just, he can't speak without it being funny. It's right, like, because his, his, his cadence is, is um, yeah. it's almost, um, he's from another time. Yeah. The way he speaks is, he's so sure of himself, but it's also, again, he's like in on the joke a little bit, which I very much like. Big fan of British comedies, by the way. Not The Office. That thing sucked. <laughs> you heard me, Gervais. That shit was true. No, imagine I opened this, <laughs> opened this whole beef with Ricky Gervais for no reason. <laughs> Ours was better. <laughs> no, but, um, but you're a, a well-accomplished stand-up uh, comic, actor. I mean, uh, and you're a very handsome guy. I, would, I was going to compliment you when you walked in, but I feel like doing it in the chair now. Oh, thank you. You're, le- you're more lengthy than I thought you'd be. <laughs> I thought you might be shorter. A lanky streak of piss. You are a lanky streak of piss? Yeah, is that yeah. your next Is that your yeah. next special? Yeah, that, that, that would be a great name for a <laughs> lanky special. Lanky streak of piss. Yeah. You're, yeah. You have a special out now? No, I'm I'm about to go on tour. You got so about to go just, on tour. I'm just about to start doing And then you're going to put dates. that, when this is done, are you going to film it for a special or no? Yeah, I mean, I, I, weirdly this time around, I've gone the other way around. So I've started doing uh, a tour here and then I'm going to go and do it in England after that. And then I'll probably do you're it doing the special States at first. the end. Doing the States first, yeah. Wow. So, Anywhere you're excited about? Um, 
I, I mean, I'm, I've never really done anywhere other than LA and New York, so right. I'm getting so to new. travel outside of those two cities and you going, going to, the to south? I'm not going to. I'm going to Texas to yeah, Austin. That that's, counts. Austin. Yeah. Austin but yeah, is, Austin doesn't, does nah. it? No. <laughs> Austin's kind of like, um, you know, that's like our our. Uh, it's like a principality of hipsters in correct the red state. Yeah, it's of not Texas. really. It is. It's still Texas for sure. Yeah. It's, particularly when you travel outside of it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But in the in the epicenter of the city, you know, it's there's a Soho house and a Whole Foods, and do you know oh, what I mean? Yeah. It's. Uh, well, I do say that when I book a tour, it has to have a Soho house. That's part in, of it. Yeah, yeah. That, that's <laughs> I will only contract. do cities with a Soho house. <laughs> <laughs> it must be at Ludlow or Soho <laughs> House. It's in your contract. What's on your rider, by the way? Do you have a specific rider? I, I've never, I haven't changed my rider since I was 18 years old and I started doing stand-up. What is so it? So it's um, Lollipops? six Diet Cokes and a bag of Haribo Star Mix. That's it? Yeah. Six Diet Cokes and Haribo Star Mix. I don't even eat Haribo anymore, but I you know, I like it there because it but feels it familiar. Of, that's reminds cute. Reminds me. That's cute. Mine is a bag of Coke. I uh, always got to have a bag of Coke. <laughs> yeah. uh, a bag of Coke and... Um, a couple of knives. I always want random <laughs> locally fashioned knives in case I get into a fight in the streets. My riders are so minuscule. Uh, it's it's kind of shitty. And every time they ask me if I want to change it, it's always um, Coke in a bottle if they can ha- if they f- yeah. can find it because I love Coke in a yeah. bottle. Uh, a diet soda of some kind for me or the opener or someone that comes with me that doesn't drink regular. Yeah. Popcorn. Yeah. I love popcorn. I want a bag of popcorn. Yeah. Uh, and a veggie tray because I, I feel like on the road I don't eat well enough and I'm like at least I'll, I'll snack some veggies yeah, yeah. show. yeah oh, that's a good idea it's kind of bo- it's boring there's yeah. nothing because I always feel like if I ask for something too demanding they're gonna be like this guy's fucking annoying yeah and you don't I don't want that attached to my name I know you have so much negative stuff already attached <laughs> yeah, to your name exactly. why add another I don't thing want, to the list <laughs> I don't want that the diva reputation I did um, a show with Mick Hucknell yeah uh, and he his rider was uh, Jeroboam of Cristal Champagne and six Activia yogurts, <laughs> which I just thought was the, the weirdest strider ever. So weird, it's so specific. Well, loves his champagne, yeah. but also likes to keep it he nice loves and trim. Gut. He yeah. wants the, like gut health the, is good. Gut health is good, that and is he doesn't so know fun. what you know vibe it's going to be after the show. Whether it's going to be a let's champagne spray or, or let's get some let's get some natural Crohn's biotics, some yeah. probiotics. <laughs> <laughs> Get my bacteria balanced inside of my gut. Yeah. I do understand that. Maybe every city I should. I've thought about on the next time I tour, which won't be for a long time, because I just put out a special on Netflix and I was like, I don't. Me and Bobby Lee are doing a tour in April mm. um, of our show and stuff from the show. And then I was like, I don't want to tour until the fall, I don't think. But if I did, I was like, I do want to do something different. I don't want to do like the same run of shows and cities and theaters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it would be nice to integrate something like this. I'll do a different rider in every city. Yeah. That would be very <laughs> yeah, cool yeah, that's to a good do. Idea. One city will be my gut health city. Yeah. One will be my my gluttonous city. I'll you know what I'll do this I'll just do the seven sins and break them over and over again in every city. Yeah. Right. And you can do a homage to me when you do the London show and get the Harry Bow and the Diet Coke. I'll get the Harry Harry Bow Star. Star Mix. Star Mix. Yeah, yeah. What is that? I know Harry Bow gummies, but what's Star Mix? I think I th- I th- Harry Bow Star Mix is like the blue packet, like the, just the sort of standard. You say that like we all know what that is. Yeah. I need to look it up. Harry Bow Star Mix. Okay. Ah. Uh, yeah. Ah. Uh, I spelled it wrong. Uh, yeah, I got it. I got you. Yeah, it's just the old school. Just old school. Simple. It's kind of sad to be it honest It is pretty with sad. Yeah. Sad. On your own in a dressing room, just to have Harry Bow in, in a bag. bag of children's sweets, <laughs> <laughs> just very lonely. Yeah, imagine. Solitary. Uh, are you are you single man or no? I'm not a single man. Okay, I was gonna say if you were, it would be very funny if a, a lady friend came back to say hello. And <laughs> she's like, "What do you got back here? Cristal and yogurt? I have Harry Bow <laughs> yeah. and Diet Cokes. <laughs> just it's sit a, here and chuck them into each other. A sad mouths. little party. Yeah. Actually, put the Harry Bow in the Diet Coke. That's actually kind of fun. Yeah, it takes it back to your childhood. Oh, now. Yeah. You know. But they're a bit racy for me. Oh, that's too over the top. That's too over the top. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> so I'm not an animal. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, I don't want to cross that line. Do you, we're on your uh, on tour, though, presumably you're not like wanting to come off stage and get fucked up after every show. No, I mean, you know what's you funny just... is I like to drink. I'm a drinker. Yeah. I've always been, but I but I balance it pretty well. So when I was young, I would do a couple of drinks before the show with friends and eat dinner. Mm. Now. If I'm going to have drinks and dinner, it's after the show. Yeah. 
And depending on the city, I may go out with the opener or some friends and go party, but it's pretty rare anymore. Mm. I don't want to, I don't know. I just don't want to like, ah, and then the next morning, like <laughs> have that, you know, anxiety. I mean, I'm almost, I'm 40 this year. Yeah. So, so they hit you hard now. It caught up. Yeah. It all caught up. Yeah. How old are you now? I'm 34. Yeah. You still got two more years left. Yeah. 36 is when they, it comes knocking. Is it? Yeah. 36, death will come knocking. He shows up to your front door and he's like, hey man, enough. Enough. Enough is enough. You know, it might be one trip to the ER. Yeah. Uh, after you fell off a roof in Jersey somewhere. <laughs> that happens. Yeah. But no, I think I've slowly but surely learned. Also, question for you. When I'm done, I want to sit in complete silence for at least 10, 15 yeah. minutes after the show. Yeah. So is, are you yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A little bit of time to myself. And then I, I would just want to get out of the venue and I want to go to a- Leave. A, a, yeah, if I'm going to have a drink, I want to get out of the venue. I don't want right. to be sat in a- dressing room and entertaining well, loads of people. Because people just... don't know the 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 aftermath of the show is quite sad. It's yeah. uh pretty lonely. Pretty lonely. And you're just sitting in a room staring down. Even if you'd had a great set, you're yeah. like just kind of going through your head and the motions of the night and your emotions are finally registering. It's interesting we're allowed as comics to just kind of throw all that stuff away, mm -hmm. all these real emotions about life. Mm -hmm. And then they come right back into play as soon as you like sit still for a moment. Mm -hmm. And that's why most comics, you know, try to get out of there, have a drink, or go eat food, or go mm. talk, because they don't want to start letting their brain think normal yeah. thoughts. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we like trying to wash it away as fast as we can. I but did what, my last tour, though. I, it was a completely different experience because I did this sh show where, at the end, I did a massive like song and dance musical number with like fifteen backing dancers and Holy it shit. was a whole like production and so i toured with all of them and did did you know a 30 night uh, tour and then every time i came off stage you would sort of share in the excitement with all of these other people that you were going on tour with and it was like being in like a company of people and it was i mean it was a completely different experience because sure. every night you're like oh this is quite this is quite fun when you come off stage and uh, you know you've got people that are, are like you're sharing in that kind of it's like uh, excitement with yeah it was like yeah. being in a Broadway doing, show doing it was great. A, doing a play you get to the camaraderie together <laughs> yeah. the pain the success yeah. that's uh, the difference in stand up yeah we're singular failures and singular successes but so, basically you can pay people to hang out with you as well yeah 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 no I've heard that about you yeah yeah I heard Jack <laughs> that's what half learned. of your budget yeah. is paying people yeah. to hang out with you you just some which are, you should Venmo me for this at some point during the show <laughs> You, some completely self-indulgent song yeah. and dance number just so that you have some friends on tour. Maybe I should do that at the end of my show. <laughs> and for no reason at all, 50 dancers yeah. just to hang out. Yeah. I do. I mean, part of the thing that we learn is bringing openers, features, and friends so yeah. you can have a good friend on the road. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't care. I don't care how good you are at jerking off. Hotels are sad. Yeah. <laughs> And they just, yeah. they turn it. I've done the tub thing where I've been in a really nice hotel with a standalone tub and I've eaten dinner in a bathtub, which is, it sounds fun yeah. at first. And then when that chicken sandwich gets a little bit of soap on it, it's oh, not as good anymore. No. It's just, it just, there's, and you know, going out in a city is also tough sometimes. So bringing someone to at least go fart around town with you is kind of mm. nice, disappearing into the night, you know? Yeah. Do, you, do you meet fans after the shows? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I you tend do. to do that. Yeah. All of them? You meet as many people as you all can? All of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you stand <laughs> in the middle of the room. One -on -one. Come to me! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I do, I do a little bit of that, like, but... Meet and greets. Yeah, I'm always really w worried that then there's going to be the day you come out and there's no one there. Oh, there will one day. There will. Yeah. There, there's, I think you're nowhere near. around the corner. I think you're okay for I now. I think if I surround myself with enough dancers, then I won't be lonely. <laughs> <laughs> you keep putting these dancers on your show, you're going to be just fine. Yeah, I'm going to be just fine. In here, we pour whiskey. whiskey. I remember the first time I created a website and it was awful. It was so stupid, the colors were ugly, they were so dumb, and I just didn't know how to function it the correct way. So when people would open it up at home, uh, you know, w the headline would be on top of another word. Uh, but those days are gone. Now with Squarespace, you can create an incredible website uh, on your own, go rogue, or you can use their beautiful templates they have laid out for you. And some of my favorite features, honestly, are the video studio because I can you can create pro-level videos, uh, campaigns. Uh, if you're promoting something, whether you're an instructor or a teacher or a salesperson, 
You can, you can showcase your work with a great video, helps hook people in. And then you connect all your social media accounts. Uh, from all your social profiles onto one website, automatically push the website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share it along and you can grow your audience and the analytics on online are there for you to see to learn where your site visits and sales are coming from. It makes it so easy. So if you're thinking about building a site, go to squarespace.com slash whiskey for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, use the offer code whiskey to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Once again, squarespace.com slash whiskey for a free trial. If you're ready to launch, offer code whiskey to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Ginger. I like gingers. <laughs> you keep putting these dancers on your show, you're going to be just fine. Yeah, I'm going to be just fine. But now this new tour, how, how many people do you bring with you on this tour? Do you have people coming or no? No, this is just me and my tour manager. No uh, opener? Uh, no, I'm going to get a local opener in each city. Wow, that's a, that is, a, can I tell you? Is that da dangerous? That's a foolish endeavor. Oh, foolish, why? No, 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 I'm kidding. I'm oh, kidding, no. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. no, 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 it's, no, yeah. no, it's fun. It's That's very fun. You get to try out new stuff. You get to have new people, like new experiences. You don't get in the same kind of rhythm. Yeah. Sometimes the, it's funny, we love rhythm as comedians, but sometimes uh, uh, these like, habitual rhythms of shows and touring and playing and hotel and it gets a little monotonous and it's dangerous sometimes mm. it dries me out co comically mm. at least now you're becoming you get something fresh yeah it, it feels new and then it feels like another experience you're getting to have with someone different something different so no i think that's a good thing i did that for years and years and years when talking about a city when you get there with with someone that's got a good comic brain as well it's I so think nice. it's always really helpful and yeah and, and will only like be additive to to the show if you've had like an hour or so in addressing one. I someone. hope, or it'll be miserable, but you'll find yeah, out either yeah, way. Yeah, I'll find out how either way. <laughs> how many cities are you doing? I'm doing uh, 15 cities. Do you know them off the top of your head at all or no? Mm, no, God bless. Mm, Good for you. Chicago, the, New York. My city, Chicago. From, Chicago. I'm from Chicago. Yeah. What are you playing? Chicago Theater? The Chicago Theater. Nice. How many yeah. shows? Uh, one show. One show in each city. Although some were doing a couple in one night. And then... Yeah, doing the Beacon Theatre in New York. Great theatre, beautiful theatre. Yeah, the, Have you I been there? went there, yeah, amazing. Stunning, yeah. yeah. So I'm looking forward to doing that and then doing some dates in Canada as well uh, and then finishing in San Francisco. Ooh. The Palace of Fine Arts. The Palace of Fine Arts. Which sounds like an appropriate Have you been to San Francisco? Uh, I have once before. <clears throat> There's shit in the streets. Yes, it's quite. Um, yeah, it's disgusting. A lot. Great city. Great city. <laughs> Great city. <laughs> but just. <coughs> what is it? Is there an area of London... <coughs> Excuse me. Is, is that what happens when you think of San Francisco? Yeah, I just start, start coughing. <laughs> <laughs> I love the city. <laughs> is there an area of London that has that sort of wealth disparity? Because I don't know if you know, San Francisco, probably one of the richest, wealthiest per capita places where you'll have someone that's worth $50 million mm. homes and right next door is some of the worst poverty. Is there is there something like that in London or no? I don't think, I, to be honest, I don't think it's it, it's as bad in London. We I mean, the there's best, a bit of it. You say do, it. But you do, say yeah, we're number one. Yeah. This American exceptionalism, one. you are the best. <laughs> <laughs> At homelessness, you've absolutely nailed that. Our wealth disparity that. is wealth disparity, number one. Big tick. Yeah, well. Like the big outliers. Got to be good at something, Got to be good at something. <laughs> what part of London are you originally from? Um, I'm from uh, Putney, and now I live in Notting Hill. Notting Hill, very we all know areas. very well because we of because... Grant. Grant, uh, uh, Grant uh... Hugh Grant. No, no, no. Grant, uh, Grant Hill, the basketball player, lived there for a short <laughs> amount of time. I don't know about you, Grant. Uh, didn't you, uh, you, 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 <laughs> you, 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 oh, you, oh, you, oh, you, oh, you, a lovely man, by the way. Uh, what's the original town called? The original town that you grew up in, oh Putney, which is just Putney. Putney, 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 yeah, which yeah, is uh, over in Putney, yeah, yeah, no, it's more Putney. Oh, Putney, yeah, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Putney, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um very posh. It's very fancy. It's where they start the boat race, the Oxford and Cambridge boat race, Ooh, it's full wow. of gastro pubs. It's very fancy. It's this, right? Yeah. Everyone has oh, a yeah, bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, everyone everyone has a bike. Oh, Putner, yes. 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 Uh, excellent. Lots yeah. of gilets and red trousers. Wow. And so, as tops. a child growing up in uh, in such a pretentious area, <laughs> how did you how did you manage to find uh, a sense of humor? A sense of humor. Because honestly, you know, you know, like many of us know, <clears throat> sometimes. Uh, fancy people take themselves very serious. Yeah. And they don't know how to find the gap. 
Well, How did you find the gap? Yeah, well, I, I actually, I think what helped me is I went to university in Manchester. Call it's it very uni. different. We call it uni. Uni. Can you imagine? <laughs> I start teaching you phrases that you say. <laughs> we call it uni here, but nice try. Um, you went to Manchester. Manchester. And so I started doing stand-up up there. Right. And then, like, that, I think that really helped, like, my development as a comedian because... Uh, different from what a, you're used to. So different to what I was used to. And you had to work so much harder to, to like to nail gigs and also i've sort of found like what my like space was in in terms of like what my kind of comic persona was and it was sort of sending myself up and doing that outside of mm. the uh the confines of putney was probably quite <laughs> beneficial but when you go back to putney do people are you uh are you a hot shot over there? Uh, hot when shot. you go back to the big P? Hot shot in Putney. I actually got the poshest heckle ever in, in Putney when I did a the gig in Putney. The poshest heckle? So, yeah. Guys, do you, do you have Argus in America? Come on, man. You speak English, will you? <laughs> do we have what? Argus. Argus. Ar- Spell Ar- it. Okay. Spell it. I think A-G-A. Argus. This, is, this heckle is definitely not going to work. Can I tell you something, you- though? <laughs> It's it sounds like a racial epithet, and I'm <laughs> nervous about it. No. The way you're like, have you got Argus here? And no. I'm like, oh no, what do they oh, look like? No. This is one where I'm just like, just reverse. Just no, reverse no, tell me it. what it is. No, because it's gonna require so much explanation. No, you have and to then say it. It's gonna it. be the lamest say heckle it. ever. And Argus is like, <laughs> well, say it into like the a, mic so I can hear you. Like like a, what is it? It's like a big oven. It's like a big fancy oven. Got it. Ceramic oven. Right. right. Got it. Now, the other key element to an Arga mm-hmm. <laughs> that you need to know for this heckle to make sense is that an Arga is always on. So you never turn off an Arga. It's, it's always, always is on. Is this for cooking on. in the home? It's for cooking in the home, and it heats the home as well because it's always on. And so like a stove pipe furnace almost. A stove pipe furnace, yeah. It's like that kind of Okay, that's an Arga. That's an Arga. Yeah. And I referenced an Arga in my set, and I referenced switching. And also, I mean, there's so many elements no, to no. the Arga. This is going to land. Me- <laughs> I promise this is going to land. I can feel it now in my bones. Oh, God. So, also, Argas are associated with posh people because the big country houses always have Argas. Because they heat the whole home, and because it's also heat, very expensive. And They heat the whole home. Got it. Anyway, I was doing my Arga bit, which mm-hmm. fucking kills it's in It's a killer Arga bit. Oh, my God. This Arga bit... Crushes. Probably won't be doing it in Austin, Texas. No, or, no, no. Or any of the days. I think you should. Definitely not. I think in you Chicago. should try. Open with it, maybe. Yeah. Um, and I'd done a little bit about <laughs> about the Arga, and I'd referenced turning on an Arga. I'd said, "Oh, I switched on the Arga by accident because I don't even have an Arga, but I right. was trying to do a little bit of Arga, fit in. Arga humor, Arga, Arg, to, to Arga endear bitch. myself." Uh huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> And the gentleman very aggressively shouted out, you can't switch on an Arga. That is the point. And so he was furious yeah. you f- that I hadn't even nailed like my knowledge of Argas. And I was simple, talking about Argas. Simple Arga knowledge. Simple which ergonomics, which you now know. They're always on. I cannot wait for you now to do a gig in England and do a bit about I'm gonna, Argas. I'm gonna, <laughs> there is a challenge. It's called, it, you just spell it A-G-A. Uh, just A-G-A. Aga Range Cookers. Aga Range Cookers. And they're cheap. This is only $37,000 <laughs> for one of these things. Holy yeah. shit. I mean, that is like the Rolls Royce of the, stoves. Well, it's $37,000 fucking yeah. dollars. It better, be a, it better come with 000. a Rolls Royce. The cheap one, by the way, is $23,000. Oh, yeah, that'll That's be some, the shitty that'll be some knockoff <laughs> <laughs> ratchet. <laughs> Arga, you won't wild. want to go near Aga. that. No, if you're going to get an Arga, you want to. I mean, that's why. You know, this is the thing. This shows my Argus. trash colors. I have no. I, I know nothing about this. You know, I, the closest thing we have on on here that I can see an American made is Viking. Viking, the company that makes stovetops. Yeah, they've got one for thirty one thousand. And this is for a fucking industrial kitchen, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. But the one, the first one you told me about, this is just for someone's home. Just get one for your home, though. I'm going to get it. Let me call my wife real, and ask if we can get an Arga. Flex. Babe, can we get an Arga? How much money would you have to make to to get an Arga? Like, what's the what's the what number? kind of income would I? Yeah, be? what kind of income would you have to be making to be able to burn thirty seven thousand pounds on a? I just stove? feel like let's see. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> let's see. Let's see what a regular what's a regular stove. St- what's a regular stove cost over here? Okay, you can go get a KitchenAid. Four grand. Four right? grand. That's the, probably the... Yeah. Yeah, right? The highest end one I can find over here 
The cheapest one is a buck and a half. That's like that's like eleven hundred dollars. Yeah, for the cheapest one, eight hundred. You get a six hundred dollar one. We can go way down. These Augas are getting blown out of the water yeah, by but, deals yeah, down but, here. Uh, but what would an take... Auger's not about cooking because it's right. also fucking hard to cook in an Auger. It's about status, and having an Auger is like you know, it's like having a dukedom or another title. word. Another word I don't know. Uh, a dukedom. What is that? You'd, oh no, you don't have jukes here, do you? You mean ju- a jukebox? Uh, no, 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 like D U K E. Like if duke? one was a duke, if yeah. you were made a duke by the king, then you would be. It would be a dukedom. You know, we left you guys a long time ago <laughs> because of this kind of nonsense. This is why I we got f- we got free. I was like, I've just managed to get through the Arga conversation yeah, without having came up. all egg on my Jesus face. Christ. And I'm straight into dukedoms. <laughs> You know what? Do some Aga Dukedom stuff when you get yeah. to Austin, Texas. They're going to love it. What? <laughs> what did he say? Is he talking bad about us? I had no. a friend who is um, like aristocracy, and he has this inherited title that he will one day become. I think he's like an earl, and he lives in Scotland. And so he had to do this thing where he was sent over to America to do one of those um, functions where there's all these people that have like Americans with Scottish ancestry that go uh, and, and visit and learn about, you know, their heritage. Rich people. Just say rich people. Rich people. Yeah, just say rich, rich people. people yeah, yeah. Go and, and then they have like Highland dancing and stuff and they happen in like big convention centers in wherever. Nevada. This is the Illuminati, by the yeah, way. <laughs> it's nuts. <laughs> They're drinking kid blood. I know that I know what this is. Yeah, I know what this is. And he said that he, he was coming over and he was going through like uh, security and being asked about like the purpose of his stay and what he was doing over here. And he kept saying that he was over here with his clan and I was like that I feel like that's risky it's a bad idea that's a bad idea, a bad to, idea. <laughs> to be talking about although that he, although he had an accent loud. but he had an accent yeah he had an accent so they can get away with it so they just about got away with it but I was like I definitely probably wouldn't be like shouting about that when you he's like the boys and I the clan and yeah. I <laughs> it was my fellow clansmen no 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 what <laughs> what makes your fellow clansmen we share the same ideologies and <laughs> hatred and love <laughs> that is a loaded word. Yeah, yeah, get rid of that word. Get rid of that, that word. That's just that not needs some work rebranding. Out. Yeah, we need yeah. to get rid of that bad. But yeah. also, shame on the clan for taking the word clan. <laughs> yeah. Because I like clan. Like yeah. me and my clan, my clique, my friends, yeah. my group. Yeah. Why do they get it? Just because yeah. they had it, they tagged it. So also, true. they have clan with a K, we clan with a C, we'll take yeah. C. Why can't yeah. we take the Why? C clan, they take the K clan? They ruined it. They really it's like have. Hitler with that mustache. Nobody can do that. Nobody can ever do that again. Nobody can ever and do actually, that again. It frames the face in a nice it way. It is quite nice. Yeah. The little Hitler mustache is actually very nice. Yeah. <laughs> he took away a lot of fun stuff, that guy. Yeah. You know, when you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I, inherently, every time I see a Mercedes G-Wagon, immediately, I'm always like, well, that was a... That was a war car. That was a wartime Nazi car. My dad has. I that know he car. does. I can feel it. He does. I can feel that he's you got one. You can feel the I tension feel when you it. said yeah, it. Yeah, when I said it, you were like. And he's also not a, a shrinking violet when talking about it. He's very much. He loves this it. is Hitler's car. Okay, please <laughs> do not announce that. It makes it now seem like that's why you bought the car. I mean, it could be part of but, it. But yeah, I yeah. mean, he would have had that knowledge before purchasing it. Yeah, we all knew. But I think he. He bought the car so that then he can make everyone uncomfortable by announcing that it's Hitler's car. Yeah, that's a fun bit. <laughs> then, a, that, then that goes back to fun dad, again. It's a fun dad bit. It's a dad bit. It's yeah. a dad bit. Uh, get on in. Hitler's car. And then that's a quick, and then everyone goes, come on. Uh, yeah, that's fun. I've actually seen, I'm not going to, I cannot disclose any more than this. I've seen with my own two eyes one of Hitler's cars. Really? I know a gentleman who's a very, very uh, wealthy car collector. Yeah. Uh, who has collected... Mercedes uh, for, I don't know, 40 years, 30 Mm -hmm. years. And his collection is extremely extensive. And one of the cars that he has is so old and so specific, they assume years later Mm -hmm. that it could have been one of his cars. When it was purchased, that wasn't the knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, It was just one of of a few very special versions of this Benz. And... Years later, he learned that that might have been his car. There's oh no God. proof of it at all. Yeah. But it's crazy. That's and crazy. I thought, well, the value just goes way up then. <laughs> 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 I was like, what do you do with it? Knowing that knowledge. He's like, well, you, I mean, you can't prove it. Yeah, so it's yeah. it's only for car collector conversations and speculation. Yeah, yeah, Because there is no paperwork to prove it whatsoever. But um, I thought, how 
copy of Mein Kampf in the glove compartment. That is in there. Yeah. Yeah, that is in there. <laughs> and there's a whole bunch of swastikas all over the place, but I just figured that could be just a coincidence. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. could be coincidence. That could have just been the previous owner. It's just, you never in know. In a fit of rage. <laughs> <laughs> there's, um, you there, never know There's anymore. a guy, this is a good Google, and I've lost myself down a rabbit hole once. Yeah. And... It was, I was right. It was because I was researching for a script. And, uh-huh. yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. How to join a clan. <laughs> How to join a clan. <laughs> um, the, there's a, one of the big, I think the biggest owner of Nazi memorabilia is this English guy who lives on a farm in Norfolk and he has just so much stuff. And then the weirdest detail is that he paid like, I mean, Arga money for Hitler's bed. And he sleeps in Hitler's bed. Oh my God. I mean, what? Wait, he sleeps every night in Hitler's bed. I think he's married as well. I think there's a. To a Jewish woman. Nazi (laughs) Nazi memorabilia collector. And they have sex in Hitler's bed. They sleep in Hitler's bed. Ugh. I mean, it's. Look, how, how, how has his life led him to that? I would like, love to know what it feels I like. I just want to know for people be- to have hobbies and interests and stuff. But is it a comfortable bed? Do you imagine? I don't. I well, bet you it's, I, it's hard as a rock. I don't think Hitler slept well. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he had the energy of a man that maybe had got out of bed on the wrong side every morning. I've received no sleep this <laughs> I evening. Why can't I sleep? Is it talking on this duvet? <laughs> Why hasn't my Aga arrived? <laughs> That's why he started that whole thing. His yeah. Aga was late. Yeah. He ordered it months, months ago, and they just finally got around to it. I, uh, you know, the comedians uh, Tom Segura and Bert Kreischer, yeah. Very they funny give each guys. other gifts every year for their birthday, and they always want up each other. One year it was, a, it was a, a jet ski, a wave runner, and the other year it was a car. And mm. this year um, Segura got Kreischer. You should look this up. It's a great video. He got him Hitler's teacup. Oh, my God. Yeah, like literally Hitler's teacup. Wow. One of his teacups. So Bert took a sip. His lips touch Hitler's lips, hypothetically. <laughs> so he's kissed Hitler. It's a great bit. That's great. It's repulsive, but man, what a good bit. But also this stuff has to get bought at some point. And also I realized in talking about this great car collector who I know, who's in our business, everyone immediately at home is- Is going to know who- Well, they're probably thinking it's Jay Leno because he oh, owns yeah. a car. <laughs> Jay Leno owns <laughs> Hitler's car. car. <laughs> that was the car that Seinfeld drove in Comedians and Cars Getting Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, props to Jerry. That was bold, but I really, <laughs> yeah, that, would, that was bold. Yeah. I always wanted to do one of those with him. I don't know Jerry at all, but I thought, because I love cars. I really, really love mm. cars. And cars and golf. I love cars and golf. It's the only two things I- And whiskey. Those all kind of, uh, golf, whiskey, kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love, I love cars and golf and whiskey. And so probably the only thing I spend any money on. I don't like fancy stuff. Mm. I like to play golf with friends, to have really nice conversation, and I really enjoy vehicles so much. And particularly now because we're turning into an um, engineless society, which I know is coming, I really enjoy engines so much. I think there's something so sexy about hearing it and feeling it and knowing somebody built it with their hands is wild to me, if you can still get your hands on a mm. hand-built car. But I just uh, – I have a – that's one thing I think if I made a, a, a lot of money – I would waste it on cars. Yeah. Like, I, I think if I made so much money, like a Leno type of guy, I get why he has a garage full of toys. Yeah. Because it's like you could take, it's how, you know how these shoe collector guys that have like 800 pairs of Jordans, mm. the, it's the same thing. It's like, oh, I get to I get to do that whenever I want. Yeah. I could take it out for a spin. Yeah. But. Well, see, I would not be a petrol head. Nor you're not would I be a sneaker head. head. Sneaker head, you would be. I would not be a sneaker head. No. What are you ahead of? I would be an Arga head. I would, I would get a big garage and I would just fill it with Argos. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't drive, so that prohibits somewhat my interest physically? in cars. I physically cannot drive. You have I an have, astigmatism? You can't see that far? <laughs> <laughs> what I is just, it, though? You just have never driven. I just have never driven. As a London-born lad, yes. you didn't have a car. I didn't have a car. I was the youngest in my year group, so everyone had already learned to drive by the time I could learn to drive, and it wasn't cool anymore or exciting. Yeah but I should have done it then. And then I just kept putting it off. I've had like one lesson and I was crap and then gave up. Was it Was it manual? Mm, uh, yeah, manual. Oh, yeah. And that's even scarier yeah, it's because even it's scarier. on the wrong side. And I was terrible. <laughs> you guys build them on the wrong side. Yeah, yeah we do. It, the, ir- the irony of that is, it, correct me if I'm wrong, the reason that you're on that side is because it was, it was mimicking um, – when jousting, right? You joust no, on your right side. You're making that up. No, I'm promised. Really? Well, uh, you it's joust fear. on your right side, correct? 
Yeah. Most people are right-handed in the world. Yes. And by the way, shout out to lefties. Yeah. But my, the imagination was <clears throat> you joust on your right side. Yeah. So you pass on the left of somebody. Yeah. So that, right? I well, know. I think it definitely holds up. I think, I think that's why I read that one time. That was a theory of why. And you know what? For the sake of the show, it's yes, that's what it is. It's yeah, a it's fact. A fact. It's, yeah, a fact. Yeah. it's a fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I imagine I read it somewhere, and maybe I'm lying, but who gives a shit? But that's what it made sense to me when I read it, that it was like, right, you would use your right hand to joust, meaning you must pass on the left yeah. because two righties would go that way. I think that's great. And even if that isn't a fact, Doesn't it should become fun? a fact. Well, let's make up another one. The <laughs> other reason that uh, the, the car is on the right-hand yeah. side, you pass on the left, is because uh, during, in 1640, what is it, 1640? 1640. Six or seven? Six, I, think. I don't remember. Six. 1646, uh, one of the Louis, one of the Louis, uh, um, his his brother attacked him uh, from his over his right shoulder. Right, he stabbed him in the neck, mm. and from thence on, from thence on, from the, yeah. he decided you must be able to quickly turn this way. Yes. Well, you can't do that if you're on the other. Yeah. So that's the other that's one of the, the other, other reasons. Yeah. You know the any other fact. reasons that you guys drive on that side of the road? <laughs> yeah. yeah, everything is jousting based in, in our law and everything that we do, if you, you dig into it, it all, it's all, jousting it, all roads lead back to jousting. Even Argus. Even, even Argus are from jousting yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, the jouster would come in having had a hard joust and wouldn't have time to turn on an oven and wait for it to heat up. So he needed a device that was always on, which is why... The auger exists. He would walk in For and go, hungry, Can't this just stay justice. on? <laughs> Can't this leak gas uh, all day? <laughs> Have you ever ridden a horse, by the way? Yeah, yeah. You have? Yeah. I always said that like, yeah. Yeah, you did. You yeah, did. I've just admitted that I, what was the a 34 year old man that can't drive, but yeah, of course I can what ride was the a horse. Again? I'm not uh, an idiot. Uh, put, put, Putney. Yeah, Putney. Yeah, that was a very yeah. Putney response. That was a very Putney response. Yeah. Have you ridden a horse? To be ridiculous. Of course Putney, I've ridden a you're horse. Born with, <laughs> you're born on a horse. 34. Your mother's on a horse and shuts you out. <laughs> can you imagine coming out of the horse and then yeah, riding away? <laughs> Uh, I've been on a Handed horse a one time. Poland. That's right. Off you, ha- off you go. As you begin yeah, life. As you begin life. I've been on a horse one time, uh, miserable, scared, hated it. You or the horse? Both. Both. We agreed. We yeah. turned to each other. We were like, never yeah. again. Never again. It, I just don't. It's just it. The power of the horse. Yeah. Is so scary. I don't think people. I think when people see a horse, and they see people riding a horse because it looks effortless, they're like, "What's the big deal?" Mm. Get on one of those things. It scared the shit out of me because I had zero control. Mm. And in my imagination, I don't belong on a horse. Mm. He don't want me on him. Mm. So what holding him back from at some point being like, fuck off me and throwing mm. me off and breaking my neck. And well, I, I don't I don't like it. I'm a no-no horse And guy. they can sense that. That's why he threw me they off. Can se- they can sense. So when you're new- nervous, they know. Yeah. But you, a Putnam boy. Oh, are, no. They know. They, they can tell that like we're kindred. Uh, and when I get on a horse, they they relax. I've done the horse dancing, the dressage. You do that? I've done that. Where it does this? Yeah, with, its feet? with a little clippity clop. Just man, you know yeah. when you walked in and we talked, I liked you a lot. Now I don't as much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Let let me ask you something else because we people's I don't bingo want... cards are filling up. By the way, as well, we've got augers, dressage, jousting. Yeah. In it, it got heavy. Yeah, it got heavy. But also, I'm reserving some of my judgment because I do know you're a fancy Brit. Yeah. And I want to keep you in my good graces. Yes. Just because I know at some point I'm going to be back over there. Yeah. I'm going to be able to call you. Yeah. And go, show me around town, baby boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show yeah. me around the big P. Oh, yeah. The big P. Show me around the round big P. Round putters. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Uh, man, do I have a soft spot in my heart for London for some reason. Of the many times I've been over there, it's just a place that I really fall in. I, I fall in love every time. And I refuse to go to London when it has... Well, this is an oxymoron, but good weather. I refuse. Mm. I refuse to go to mm. London when it's like your nice your nice week or whatever yeah, you guys yeah, have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't like it. Summer. Yeah, yeah. Some, yeah. Some, some summer. Some summer. I always go in the winter. I love the dead of winter. Yes. It's my favorite. Cold, dark, miserable. Well, because also you guys aren't that cold. I'm from Chicago. You couldn't even come close to the cold that no, we feel. That's true. So your winters are shit anyway. They're bullshit. Yeah. They're fine. It's a little bit of snow and it's you know, whatever, 34, 35 degrees, which is whatever uh, nonsense backwards, upside down number Mm. scale that you guys have in Celsius, Mm. which makes more sense than us, but I'm not Mm. gonna admit it. Mm. But anyway, it's never that bad. It's always like, oh, this stinks, but who cares? I was in Chicago, it was negative 12. Yeah, it's not real. At some point, you're like, is this fake? I feel like this is fake. (laughs) Is someone doing this? This is a bit. It's gotta be a good bit. It's a bit. (laughs) But 
I've always had this very sexy fantasy of of London because every time I've gone, I've been showed such a good time by friends. Yep. Right? I have friends that live over there now, people that are from there, and it's never let me down. I've never once gone and been like, man, it was kind of a whatever trip. That town just always has something to Pop discover. Pop culture, do you like that? that I do. Yeah. I do like that. But what I really like is I like to go see, um, you know, the local shit. Take me to a good museum. Take me to mm. like a good um, sexy area that has certain nightlife, mm. not just pub life, but that there is – I, there's a lot of artsy bullshit around London you can get yourself into. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to leak any of these spots. There's a few things I could talk to you about off oh, air. Yeah. But I feel like every time I go, I get into some kind of fun trouble yeah. with a group of, of goofballs. And it's just yeah. so freeing. And um, I thank you for that. Thank, thank you. thank you for all that you've done. As the mayor. As the mayor of as London. As the mayor of London. As the mayor I miss of London. it. I miss it when you I'm You should. Because yeah, it's beautiful. It. It's great. Where do you Best stay when world. you're when you're here? Do you do you stay long periods in LA or do you just bounce back and forth until you leave? I stay with an English friend of mine who now lives out here. Do I know who it is? Is it a famous person? Uh no, just a bloke. Don't but like him. Don't I like care about with him. him. Fuck him. Because he, you know, it's just I surround myself with British people when I come out here you and have it to. feels like You have to. Yeah. How long are you here like for home. in LA? Uh, I'm here for um, two two more weeks. Well, well let me say tour. this. Yeah. I'm gone tomorrow, gone. and I'll never see you again. But no, I'm gone, but when you ever come back, yeah. you ring me. Yeah. I'm as close to British as you can get. Yeah. You okay? Yeah, you have Cause British I, energy. Because I'd like to hang out with you and, and do out. this thing in the real world because um, – I really like your rhythm, and boy, do you got long legs. And I want to see that out in public. I want to see you. What is, I want to see, see these you, bad boys for a spin. I want to see those fancy yeah. horse steppers out in yeah. public, baby. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, tell me this before I get away from it, because my my brain is like tree roots; it'll just go into places yeah. it doesn't belong. I want to know about your whiskey investment because oh, we yeah. talked about you and your friend are getting into the. Are you pulling to sell? Or are you pulling to give away? Uh, like, are you making a, a batch to a sell? Batch. Yeah, yeah, you to are. sell. Okay. Um, like, but, uh, yeah, quite a limited run of it initially. Yeah. I've bought two casks and I'm going to do you a got blend. two casks. Two casks. And how long has it been aging? Uh, it, the One of them is called, what's it called? Dun, Dundas? I think it's called Dundas. Dundas. It's like fi 15 year age. 15 is yeah. good? Yeah, yeah. What about the other one? Do you know? The Similar? other one? No, no, less. Much less. Yeah, and then it, we're going to blend them. And call it Soho Whiskey. Soho Whiskey. Soho Whiskey. I like so much. And I will send you some. Please, honestly. I, I Like, I love to try new stuff, especially, uh, shout out to my boy Whiskey Pete. Uh, Whiskey Pete sends stuff all the time. He's the boy that sent us some of the jazz that we had up there. Oh, amazing. And honestly, going to pull from a cask yourself to taste and oh. mix the blend, it's so, it, so, I feel like a child. That's yeah, yeah. my Harry Bow moment. Yes. When yeah, I yeah. pull from there, and I get to mix and taste like the different, you know, the different versions that whatever um, distiller has put together. It's fascinating to me because I think people, mm, it's easy to be like, whiskey kind of all tastes the same to me. People do say that sometimes. Like, mm. I don't really. But I think once you really get a couple of good ones, you go, oh, oh, this is different. Like the first time you really got into good wine, like I was never a wine guy. My wife loves wine. And we would go out, and finally, when we got a couple of bucks, we'd buy a nice bottle, mm. <clears throat> begrudgingly, because I was like, it's foot grapes. Why do I want to spend all this money on foot grapes? <laughs> and when you have a good bottle, you go, oh, shit. Wow, yeah. Fuck. The yeah. difference is unbelievable, yeah. right? It's. I feel the same way about this. So hopefully Soho Whiskey will live up to its name. Well, I, I was not into whiskey at all, and then I went and did a, a whiskey tour with a friend of mine. He taught me into going up to Scotland, and we visited a load of distilleries, and I was like, it's just not really my bag. And then... Within a week, I was just like Changed a full blown whiskey ball. <laughs> <Right, see? laughs> I was like, I'd found my dram. What you was, need to do, yeah. um, and if you ever do another um, Netflix series, uh, don't take your dad, take me. <laughs> and me and you can go do the bourbon run. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. American whiskey bourbon in Kentucky. Have you ever yeah. you've never no, been? No, I really want to do that trip. I got to tell you, man, you would. Because the difference is, right, like, um, you know, Scott, the Scots, mm. and the history with, with, with Scottish whiskey is generations and generations, similar to what happens down in the bourbon world, right? Yeah. But for us, and not to be diminutive, because these are my people, I love them very much, but it's, it's you know, like what we would say, like, good old boys. It's kind of like people's people. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's There's nothing really fancy about it. Even mm. the most expensive, high-end, successful operations. And you're talking 
these companies are making hundreds of millions of dollars a year. They're still the same old good old boys when really? they were. Yeah, because it's a cultural, it's a cultural thing. It's a part of their world is not, they're not driving a Ferrari around Louisville because mm. they're multimillionaires. No, they're reinvesting it in these companies to build out these whiskey brands to make them sexier and bigger and more available. And it's just, there's something different about Bourbon Run when you go down to all these distilleries that have history to them. And a lot of times you'll meet somebody whose dad's dad's dad has been working there and it's passed down right. and they teach them all of the intricacies of it. I think it's fascinating. I yeah, mean, I, yeah. Because there's something so rich about preserving the culture because like anything else, not to sound like an old fart, but you know, things like that can die very easily. And mm. if you don't preserve stuff at all, if you don't have any mm. kind of tradition, it's like, pff, it goes away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's hard in America because every tradition, you know, tends to get criticized because a lot of times here they're like, yeah. was that a racist yeah. tradition? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. I just thought, yeah. I just thought it was fun. But I do think one day if you get a chance, let's do the bourbon oh, run together. I will do, I, seriously, I'll yeah, fly yeah. to Kentucky a Brit, Brit and a Ging. Ginger the Brit. Ginger the Brit? <laughs> Ginger the Brit. Ginger the Brit would be Ging great. Ginger the Brit. When, whenever I go, by the way, they think I'm one of you. When I go to the UK, they think I'm British. Yeah. So people talk to me like a local. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how you change your tone when, when, when you realize yeah. it's an American? Yeah. Like if an American's in London and a Brit will come up to me and, be, and you know, and give me kind of like a, you all, you all right, mate? And I'll go, oh, yeah, hi, yeah, thank you. And they're like, mm, uh. And they immediately check out because they know I'm not one of them, you know? Yeah. You fuck me right off. It's so wild. Which is the opposite. When we meet a Brit here, we're like, oh, oh, like you're a new toy for us yeah. to play with. Yeah. Why is it? You don't like, you guys don't like us that much. No, I I think. Speak for I the do. Speak for the country, not I you. I do. You do. I do. They don't. They, yeah. I mean, they don't. Oh, they hate us. I mean, yeah. They don't. And probably recent current affairs hasn't helped. Yeah. Yeah, With, yeah. Our track record's tough. Yeah. I mean, but hey, that, dude, you guys did Brexit. You're not perfect either. Don't <laughs> fucking look at us yeah. like we're bad boys, all right? You guys are bad boys too. Yeah, we're bad. Oh, no. I mean, You're, don't get me wrong. We're, we're definitely <laughs> bad boys. But I think, yeah. Don't get me wrong. We're bad yeah, boys. We're yeah, bad you're bad boys. boys. But yeah. also, uh, it, it's, uh, it's just like the way that you guys understand – or treat Americans is always very funny when we go over there. I try my best to not be super American when I'm yeah. there. Because I know you're judging me the whole fucking time. <laughs> I just can feel it in my bones. Unless I go to a shitty pub. Shitty yeah. pub, there is no judgment. But even if you order loudly in your American accent. Doesn't you matter. You don't feel the like well, they're all velociraptor drunk. heads. Nah, they're all drunk. <laughs> they're all drunk. If it's a local spot, like a local neighborhood yeah. spot, I'm very quiet and sneaky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's a loud shitty pub. I don't care. And at that point, you could just be so drunk that you're talking in an American accent. One of the locals. You know, could you know be what I mean? one of the locals. A local that just, lost his accent. Yeah. He's just doing it for James. Can you imagine wake, waking up one day, losing your accent? You sound like me. How wild would that be? <laughs> if one day you woke I, up. And you, I, can you speak with I an American accent? I think people think that I, when I come back, I have American affectations. Well, you probably lose a little bit. they absolutely destroy me. They do? No. Yeah, because you have to get into like little habits when you're out here like asking for water. Water. Instead of water. May I have water? So you don't have someone constantly going. Let me hear you your say, American you accent. Can you do it? Uh, say, say, hey, it's great to be here on the Whiskey Ginger Podcast. Hey, it's great to be here on the Whiskey Ginger Podcast. That's wonderful. <laughs> that sounds way better than the other shit that you've been doing the whole time. <laughs> that is really good, actually. That, you, you do a very good job. Would you ever do an acting role of a, an American accent the whole time? Um, I did do one. You did? Yes. When did you do it? I did Clifford the Big Red Dog, and I was American in that. Okay, but 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 wait a minute. No. Animated. No. That's live action. Live action. Live action. And I had an American accent in it. And I thought I'd done quite a good job of the American accent. And then the movie came out here and it was well received and yeah. no one said anything. And then it came out in England. And oh my God, the amount of abuse on Twitter for my American accent from British people going, why the fuck is he talking like that? It doesn't sound anything like an American. And I think what you just did just, sounded good. <laughs> fuck all those people that criticized yeah, fuck you. fuck them. How about this? Say, um, uh... Great job, Clifford. Now, now let's go to the park. Let's hear that. Great job, Clifford. Now let's go. Sorry, you sound Spanish. No, I went a bit great Spanish job, there. Clifford. <laughs> great, great job, Clifford. Now let's go to the park. God, that sounds so good. Yeah, that's pretty creepy. Yeah. See, that's how I think that you guys are putting on the other thing. What? This is what you really sound like, and this the, the, whole wall is all fake. This, yeah, you fucking phonies. Get some of those uh -huh, parts that Tom uh -huh. Middleton's unavailable <laughs> for. <laughs> Um, there, so there was a lot of um, discourse about my American accent, which people 
well, obviously able to suspend their disbelief to uh, buy a 10-foot red dog, but the right. idea of me being American was just too much, Lord. and I just took them out of the movie. Why couldn't you have been British in the film? And there was another guy who was... Um, it was it's, it's baffling as to why I couldn't be British in the film as well. Like, that always bothers me. The, when, my wh- sister's British in the film as well, and then the daughter is American. It's very confusing. But I don't like that when they do that. Why couldn't you just be British? I never got that. Like... Yeah. Um, uh, look, uh, unless it's uh, such a, uh, it's such a, like, pulls such a big part of the story, I understand. Yeah. But, like, Nicole Kidman, for the most part of her career, mm. speaks with an American accent. You almost always see her as an American. Yeah, yeah, She's not. No. But, like, every role I fucking see her in, she's an American. Yeah. But I'm Gerard like, Butler's nailed it because he has thing. a sort of and, and Liam Neeson where they have like a little bit of a transatlantic lilt, but it's basically their own voice. Butler more than more than Liam because Butler kind of sounds like he's from everywhere a little bit. He like, sounds like an American doing a Scottish accent. Yeah, and even when he tones it down, you're like, this is just a traveled guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, yeah. like my dad would have businessmen friends sometimes yeah. I'd meet and they didn't live anywhere. Yeah. They lived everywhere. Yeah. You know, th- they would have this kind of like a little bit of an accent, but not really. Yeah. But you didn't know where it is and you're like, what is yeah. it? Are you British? Or are you, what the yeah. fuck? Yeah. Or sometimes you get Australian in there and then you're like, mm. what are, what are yeah. you? And they're like, well, I lived in London for like a uh, tough couple of decades and then uh, it would <laughs> yeah. like, it would yeah, go, it just go, it travels around it the would globe. Tra- and you'd be yeah, like, yeah. what, how yeah. the fuck did you, and he has that. He's like a composite. He does. He kind of has this, like, I've touched everything. Yeah. It's like what Johnny Depp wanted it to be, but it didn't. It yeah. turned out to just be creepy. Yeah. yeah like, his yeah. was like, very good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, no, 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 it's no, not no, working. No, no. Madonna does the same thing, yeah. too. Uh, God bless her. But, like, fucking, when I heard her sometimes, she's got, like, a British, it's like, it's like, um, it's like if someone was doing a jokey British accent. Yes. But they didn't mean it. Yeah. yeah. When they're like, you know. Yeah, that's how it's really gonna be. You know, it's like a but it's, yeah. and a piece of you would be like, "Are you fucking around?" Yeah. And they're like, "I'm just yeah. kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm fucking around." But she's st- stuck with it for some reason. It I, is infectious. My, I love um my one of my favorite performances in any movie is uh, Sean Connery in The Untouchables, oh, where he yeah. does American for like two scenes, and then he's like, "Fuck it, fuck it, I'm Sean Connery." Can't work. <laughs> and he just just suddenly turns back into Sean Connery. Well, you know what happened? I'm sure during the filming too that they were like, "It's this is we just." Just cut it out. <laughs> this is fucking awful. Even the editors are like, yeah. oh, I don't know, we're never going to be able to do this. Just just let him just do him. Just let him do him. Well, most of those guys from that generation too, the, you kind of banked on them being them, yeah. right? It was kind of yeah. like, that was what was so appealing yeah. about them was they were so uniquely them that you were like, well, that's what people want to see mm. until you got the new generation. Not to say that it didn't happen before, but you know, the Daniel Day Lewis or- you know, people that kind of like yes. shape shifted. Yeah, it's a newer idea. I know it's been around for a long time in cinema, but it is something wild about in the last, I would say, twenty years, thirty years. You would see actors like go so far away from themselves mm. that sometimes you wouldn't even fucking know who they are. Mm. Which I always, Tom Hardy did that a lot. Where I was always like, "Who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. Who is this guy?" No, Almost like I'm going to throw something at you and it's give it, blow your mind. Give it, Tom Hardy. Yeah, fellow partner boy. I went to the same school as Tom Hardy. We are from the same neck of the woods. Our parents are friends. You know him? I've met him a couple you of times. To, I met him. him. No, I met uh, I My met wife him. wants to have sex with him. Uh, yeah, he's a very Trust handsome me. guy. She said it a lot. She says it <laughs> really? a lot. Yeah, it's kind of a lot. <laughs> At some point I was like, okay, that's enough of that. Yeah. But she really, really likes him. I saw him um, If you can get my wife to fuck Tom Hardy. Yeah. I Well, you I, don't, we're not, I don't think we're that close. I don't know whether I would be able to just... Call him out of the blue and say, Tom. would you fuck Andrew's it's wife? Jack. You fuck my friend's wife. <laughs> Cheers. That's all it would take. Yeah. Just give yeah. me a little bit. Yeah. Just try. I might, I think, I feel like I might need to not break him down and that's not being disparaging about your wife. <laughs> I just feel like I might need to reach out and before he, cultivate look, this. Look, before he gets with old fatty bones at your house, old, yeah. uh, old the old slag that you're with. <laughs> no, She's always said, and I, yeah. it's so funny because she always, that's, she thinks he's so handsome yeah. and so lovely and so talented. And he's, I agree, which is annoying. Yeah, yeah. I want to disagree. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like your, if your significant other is like, oh, like he or she is so wonderful. You want to be like, they're not that good. They're yeah. fine. But with him, you're like. It's fucking annoying. I'm I like, would. I know. I'm another girl in the room. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, he is. He's so fucking talented. He, it's just one of those people where he's polarizing. He's got that that thing. He's able to just get away with stuff that I think normally would come across as, you know, I don't know, 
contrived. I mean, sometimes yeah. people do stuff and when they transform, you're like, that's corny. Yeah. But not that guy. No, okay. But also, I don't know if he, like, what what his base level is. Like, he, he oh, doesn't, he doesn't really... Oh, he has no, because he's like... They don't exist. Why does I say? Like, he should sound like me. And I, I met him and he came over. He's like, oh, oh Jack, how are you, mate? And he's got, like, the gold tooth and the yeah. tattoos. Great and to like, you, Jack. Like, but, but I think he's just like... A, I don't know, like he's a part. He is. Uh, he is one with the universe. Yeah, he's not ours anymore, man. No, yeah, that's he's why he's there. such a great actor. So he's a. So he's a P dog. He's, he's a, a P dog. He's from the P. He's a P dog. <laughs> he's, yeah. By the way, we just you say together it, it in sounds sixth like form. You said pedo for some reason. Pedo, no, he's no, no, P dog. No, no, he's not a pedo. <laughs> he's a P dog. He's a P dog. He's no, from the P. Yeah, yeah, from the big P. <laughs> big P. <laughs> jou- back in the day, we jou- we were jousting, yeah, homies. We were jousting. So he grew up in your. Anybody else from your area that's like of note? Like oh. on the Wikipedia page from your high school, are you the one? No, I actually have a bit about this in in my routine. Cause, Do you? Yeah, because I complained well, do you about burn it, it now or no? <laughs> do it. Get it. Put it on. Put it on tape. So no, it, it it's a genuine gripe that I went to a school that so many famous people went to that I'm like the dirty secret. Uh, and so it's Emma Watson and whoa. Tom Hiddleston whoa. went to the school, and so Robert Pattinson. Oh, yeah. So whenever they write about the school in newspapers, or like it's always them, and yeah. I'm the dirty secret. And on the website, like I'm, like right down the bottom. Where's Jack? Yeah. <laughs> also, doesn't help that W is your last yes, name. Yes. Yeah, you're the yeah, bottom yeah. of the bottom yeah, anyway. Bottom of the bottom. And they figured he won't care. He's it's white all the at the bottom. It's not that big of a deal. That's um, sad that so many nice famous people went yeah. like tr- uh, successful famous people. Yeah. But then, so the bit I do is I, I complain about this and say that I've complained about it a lot. And then this is true, that there was a news story about a teacher that had been arrested because they'd found a load of indecent images on his laptop. Whoops. And in the Daily Mail, it was pervert teacher arrested at Jack Whitehall's former school. And, and I was name, <laughs> name dropped for the first time ever. And there was a picture of me. And there was a picture of this like pedo teacher. Were you being, smiling, like, big? Fucking carted out in handcuffs. And and then finally, I'm now the one that they want to talk about when they reference this school. And it's that hey, fucking story. Claim to fame is claim to fame. Claim to fame is claim to fame. That's who you are. That's yeah. what you represent. Emma Watson, Robert Pattinson. Yeah. Hiddleston. Yeah. Wow. Are they all? Wait, Emma Watson's got to be younger than you for sure. She's two years younger than me. Right. And she got cast in Harry Potter when I was at this. I was at school. Which one is she in Harry Potter? Is she Harry? <laughs> she's Harry. Uh, wait, no, you're Hagrid. <laughs> she's Hagrid. Yeah. You're the same age, but Pattinson's I'm two years be, older. Pattinson's got to be the same age though. He's isn't yeah. He's a, he was the year above me. Yeah. Were you friends with any of these humans or no? Um, Tell me, you had some Robert Pattinson I, beef. Yeah, I had. I, well, I, I I basically did. I did two, two, like two whole shows that were all about my vendetta against Robert Pattinson because he got cast in all of the plays over me, and my mum would always compare us. So I did these shows where I just t- would like just fucking torch Robert Pattinson, and it was me being really angry and jealous. <laughs> uh, and like, like one show that ended with me like reading out a load of um, unofficial biographies of him, sat on stage like just just fucking trashing him basically <laughs> and that was like two shows that I, that I did on tour and did it on TV and did it on fucking that cut just runs the, deep huh yeah but then I then I bumped into him six or seven years later and he was so nice and I just felt yeah. awful but that's it, what you get for being a bad yeah, boy being a dick you're a dick <laughs> no, yeah, that's what you dick. get dick and it was and and also it was all all of the slander back then was about how he was a terrible actor and Twilight and wh- how wooden right. he was and right. not only did he have the last laugh in as much as when he met me he was lovely but then he also proved to everyone that he was a fantastic actor and has now done all these brilliant films where he's really good and, and look at you well long hair Batman trailer was released on the same day that um, Paramount released a trailer for Clifford the Big Red Dog where Clifford urinates on my chest Mm -hmm. and they were they were both put out into the world at the same time who won that war who won that war eh listen up Pat me getting a golden shower from the Big Red Dog (laughs) (laughs) and you are the Batman (laughs) he wins again I feel like that should be you you should continually (laughs) now dog him because it's now it's fun now it's punching up forever and it's nothing Mm. but fun you should. I also did a thing. Oh, it was so awful. Um, I did a like a charity pantomime. You know pantomimes? You know pantomimes. Yeah, but what a charity pantomime? What do you mean? It was like some one off show that they did in Notting Hill to raise money for a theatre and they said we do this silly pantomime 
would you come and do the cameo? And I was like, well, fuck it, no one's going to find out. And it's one night. And so I'll go and I went to the to do this pantomime and it was Dick Whittington or something. And they had me this costume and it was like tights and jodhpurs mm. and it was a it was a humiliating costume to get into but then i looked out and i was like there's like 300 people in here and again you know no one's gonna not, know no one's gonna know 300 people are gonna know went out on stage and i'm doing some fucking embarrassing tawdry dance dressed in jodhpurs and and then there's a load of children on stage sort of hurling abuse at me because that was the bit it mm. was good bit it was humiliating yeah and then I looked out and I saw Robert Pattinson and he was just sat there with his hot girlfriend and they he had some the girlfriend had some connection to the person that ran the show. Patty wins again. Patty wins again. <laughs> <laughs> Me there dancing in period costume. I wanted to so bad. Ne- and my nemesis just like the the grin on his face. And he doesn't really smile much but he it was fucking ear to ear. He was like look at this prick. <laughs> You know what? Career is going well, eh? Honestly, fuck him. You know, I like him, but fuck him now. Fuck now, him. after all this, fuck him. Fuck him. He's too successful. He's too successful. He's winning all over the place. I know, and still living rent free up there. Yeah, he's yeah. got a. What do you mean? He's got a huge flat. Up oh, there. A that's, huge flat. That's fucking. Yeah. That's like got to be ten thousand square feet <laughs> 10, up there. Ten thousand square feet. That's massive. Up there. He's got six bathrooms up there. Six and he, each of his bathroom. Yeah, six hours up there <laughs> yeah. as well. Yeah. And it, uh, every hot woman he's ever dated is just dancing <laughs> just around. Just dancing your around head. in my head. <laughs> yeah, but you do fine with women. There's no way you don't. You're a handsome guy. You're affable. You come from P-Town. I got, you got long legs. stems. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I imagine that you've always been fine with the women. You've always had no problem. Uh, I, Did you have a problem when you were young? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you call it? Hideous Why? child. Were you really yeah, a boy? Yeah, hideous child, yeah. Had Why? big goofy teeth. Yeah. Uh, glasses, braces. British ac- affectation. affectation. Uh, yeah. You had oh, very yeah. British uh, look. But then how did you look so American? Now you look normal. Well, do you want to hear a big humble brag? Uh-huh. Had the same orthodontist as Prince Harry and Prince William. Whoa. Yeah. Smile for the camera real fast. Look at those chompers. Oh, yeah. Now, who do we like more, Harry or William? Well. Also, which one's which? <laughs> 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 um... I Harry is me. Harry is you. Harry's the redhead, right? Harry's the redhead, yeah. Yeah. I go there, people joke, Harry. Yeah. That's a bit. People think it's funny. Yeah. I go down Southern California to Mexico, people think I'm Canelo, the boss. The boss oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Canelo, hey! <laughs> I will hear, I'll hear that all the time. <laughs> Hello. It's funny, but hey, Canelo, very accomplished, great. Harry also, you know, the breakaway king of... The royal fam, yeah. the breakout star, you know? But, but you not a great lookalike to have these days back in England. You might not be as welcome in those pubs. Yeah, I know. Well, the ginger thing is a weird... I don't know what it is with you guys. And you I don't... thought this was a word that you don't use. Ginger? Yeah, I, I've been told to change that when I've made... Not that I make ginger jokes. Go on. You when I have bitch. referenced um, the what red-headed is... community in my show. In America, I've been told to, um, to, to tweak it. No. So here's the deal. The reason that is is because ginger is... Um... That's interesting. You saying ginger in America, yeah, it may be lost on people, yeah, uh, just because of your fanciness, yeah. But um, it's just it's a term of endearment, yeah, for us to say that's our word, yeah. Now you can call you you say ginger at, yeah. at most, but you can't say ginger, no. So it's ginger, yeah, yeah. You better not say the hard no, R. Don't say the hard don't R. Don't hard R me. <laughs> no, but also when you guys say ginger, um. I do think it just comes off different than when we say it yeah. for some reason. But people don't call me ginger. We, I do Brits it. do, right? Yeah, no, no yeah, yeah, Brits yeah. do. But in America, they don't. Yeah. I've used it just because I've I've loved it. I think it's, yeah. it definitely is a term of endearment. Great it's word. funny how it's an insult from Brits, but you're like, that's not an insult at all. It's Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. It's uh, because the ginger root is red or, yeah. well, orange is red. Yeah. It's not really an insult. No, it's it's, it's a pretty shitty insult. Pretty if it shitty is. Insult. I mean, it could, there's so many other things you could yeah. say. Yeah, yeah. Like we say, fire crotch was kind of our favorite as a kid. Fire crotch. Fire crotch. What's that? A... Well, like your pubes are red. Oh, fire crotch. Fire crotch. You could take that back over the pond. Yeah. Oh my god. If yeah. May, don't lose back. that in the air. Keep no. that one in your yeah. pocket. <laughs> fire crotch. Uh, um, what's some other good ones? I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to think of the ones that we would say in America that would be similar. But ginger is an insult over there to gingers, but I don't know why they would get offended. It's not an offensive word. No. It's just not. I don't mm. get it. But also, I think 
many, if not most, if not all of the redheads, men in yeah. Britain are very ugly. And I'm one of the ones that got out. I got yeah. away. Yeah, you when know. you brought the gene to America, for some reason we made a handsome version. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but over there, a lot of fours. Yeah. A lot well, of fours and fives. Prince Harry was probably... Might be one of the closest one of the to being handsome. Yeah, and I'm still better looking than gone. that guy. I'm still better looking than that guy. <laughs> Vote down below if I'm better looking than Prince Harry. But you know I am. And you know I am. And you just know I am. I don't care that he ma married a, a girl off TV <laughs> who forced him to leave the royal family because she just couldn't keep up with everything. What a pussy, by the way. Stick it out, you bitch. Stick it out, lady. Just buck up. Stick it out. Do the rituals. To the curtsy, ritual. just a little curtsy. Just that's curtsy, all dude. they ask for. That's all they want. That's what they want. And a blood sacrifice, but it's like, you'll get yeah. there. <laughs> you'll get there. Uh, no, it, it is funny to think how, I remember when I went, I went, um, God, I can't believe I haven't even said this to you. I went, I couldn't afford study abroad when mm. I was in college, but I did an exchange program and I found one school that would exchange with my school and they were called the University of Sussex in Brighton, England. Shout out to oh, University yeah. of Sussex. Yeah. And this is 2004, mm. quite a long time ago. And uh, 2004, I think, four or five, something like that. And I went down there and in London was much different. Mm. Uh so much different now over the years that I've gone back. It's so wild. But I went down to Brighton and um, I learned about the ginger hate that London has for some reason. <laughs> they, they really do. And when I would go up to London, I'd get a couple mockings for the ginger, you know? Mm. And then they would also, you know, like, where are you from? And I'd say, oh, America, Chicago. And then they'd go, what are you doing here? i say, oh, I'm going to school. Where? i say, oh, I'm Brighton. And they would lose it. Like, uh, are you gay? Everyone, are you, are you, are you? Uh, what's the other one? What's the word they say? Like a mincer or something like that or um, whatever. The, it's another derogatory term for gay yeah. people. But they would say that and I had no idea what the fuck they were talking about. Yeah, yeah. But I guess it was a, it was like a big gay port town or something like yeah, that. It's a, yeah, I think it still has I, that connotation because I really? think it probably just has a really I gotta, vibrant gay scene. Well, the whole time I was it's, there. That, which is why it's so fun. It is very fun. <laughs> yeah. I had a great time. It's a great place. And I would say like every guy that I blew, I don't know <laughs> if they were gay or that was just, I thought that was just British stuff. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, like I'd blow a guy and he'd be like, you know, carry yeah. on. And I would be like, I guess that's just a cultural thing. I didn't understand that. <laughs> I loved Brighton so much. I had such a wonderful time down there. My heart yeah. still is yeah, heavy yeah. for Brighton. I, I, yeah. That's it, it's where just, you learned to joust as well. Though, yeah, right? was, <laughs> so, there's a couple joust. of jousting clubs there. <laughs> it <laughs> is. Yeah. It really was. On, on, yeah. the, on the rocky beaches, oh, by the way. Yeah. Worst beaches. Worst beaches. Tip to tip. Oh, yeah. They're not The rocks? Beaches. My yeah. God. I couldn't. I was like, this is fucking awful. I went with a group of friends. And I was like, this is one of the worst beaches I've ever been to in my life. A you horrible, can't even lay down. Freezing cold, yeah, like and it's, pebbles, and then getting pilloried by the wind. And you walk out like this because everything yeah. hurts. You can't step yeah. normal. No, I did not like it. But mm. Brighton as a city, the people, the University of Sussex, the town, the idea of of get of like disappearing there, man, I'll I'm thankful for that for the rest of my life. It was such a wild experience. Then I would take the train. Or no, you know what back, I did twice, but one time I took the mega bus. Is oh that, my God, the mega bus, yeah. It is? Yeah, you can get on that for like a one, pound. One pound. Yeah, I one pound. One pound to London. I thought it was fake. I thought, well, they're going to charge me at every yeah. stop or something. Because in yeah. America, nothing is what it seems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought a pound is never going to get me to London. It was yeah. an hour to London. I've traveled on a mega bus once, and yeah. I went on a mega bus um, when I was coming back from Edinburgh Festival, and I got onto the mega bus, and it was, it, it was like perfect timing because the following day there was a Justin Bieber concert in London. So there was oh. also some Justin Bieber fans that were on the bus mm -hmm. and some young kids. And right. then the normal um, patrons of the mega bus who were some very like dodgy alcoholics, say, normal's like an interesting grizzled, word. Yeah. like men with no seasoned. teeth. We say seasoned, 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 seasoned humans. Uh, string vests and, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, <laughs> missing teeth. And there were these two girls and they were rabbiting away about the concert and they were talking about it for like 15, 20 minutes. And then this man <laughs> turned around and said, would you two stop talking about cunting biban? <laughs> I never heard cunting, like cunting cunt biban. deployed in that It's kind of nice way. though. It's great, right? Not cunting cunt, biban. Not cunty. No, cunting, cunting. biban. God, I love Guy. That's good. He meant it though. He really he didn't want really to hear about it. He really fucking didn't want to hear you know about why? Justin Bieber. Because he couldn't go to the concert. He was living. Yeah. He couldn't afford it. <laughs> no. Tried to get the ticket. Yeah. He's like, I can't go to fucking Cunting Bieber. Bieber. 
He was so mad about it. Well, because he was trying, he was searching, cunting Bieber and nothing was coming up. <laughs> it's Justin. <laughs> ah, damn it. Thought that was his first day. I misheard it. <laughs> the mega bus was a the mega bus was an experience of a lifetime. I feel I can smell it, even when you're talking about it. It's it does mad. have a distinct yeah. Uh, air to Megabus. Yes. The people that were on it was very sketchy. And I smoked a joint before I got on it because I thought, or a Wise. spliff, sorry. I smoked a spliff that my, that uh, Rachel had rolled for me, the 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 the, the other gin. She was a little tiny gin mm. and she rolled it for me and she said, um, good luck. And she was so sweet about it. But she didn't tell you. I didn't understand what she meant. I, I was like, good luck. luck. Yeah. Because coming from American cities, buses and it was like that wasn't a thing. Yeah, it didn't matter. It was like it's not a big deal. When I'm taking the bus to London, who gives a shit? And I got on there, I was like, this is not nice. Yeah, it went through the probably the worst parts of London mm. before we got into where I needed to go because I was going to. Uh, oh, where did he get my stop? I can't remember the stop. I'm trying to remember. Hold on, I'm gonna get it. Gloucester Road. Gloucester. Gloucester Road. That was my stop. <laughs> yeah. Gloucester Gloucester Road. That was my stop. That's my friend. My friend Tyler was off Gloucester yeah. Road. What part of London is that? I don't even remember. Mm, like West London, Central West London. Is that bad? No. Uh, Gloucester Road. Yeah, and it's, no, not particularly. Fucking snob, not snobby fucking. I know. You fucking on. cunting Whitehall. <laughs> cunting Whitehall. Cunting Whitehall, <laughs> you son of a bitch. Um, okay, so listen. A, I appreciate you. B, a new friendship has blossomed. C, I want you to tell all of the humans in the United States where they're going to be able to see you. Okay. Yeah. Just what website can they go to to click on? Is it uh, CuntingWhitehall.com? www.jackwhitehall.com. Jack Whitehall. We don't do the WW over here. You don't have to do that. You know, it automatically does it without you. How old are you? Jackwhitehall.com. Go see this brilliant, yeah. uh, brilliant comedian live. A wonderful person, a great presence, a very funny human being. The 10th most mind. famous person to go to his school as well. Uh, probably lower by now. Lower Some low. other people have come out of there yeah. for sure by that time. <laughs> yeah. You've been gone. I'm sure somebody's beating you again. Yeah, that's true. What about uh, <laughs> what's her name from uh, Stranger Things? Did she go to your fucking probably. school? Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> that kid. Yeah. yeah. Well, I got to think of her name. What is that kid's name? Uh, uh, Millie Bobby Brown. Millie Bobby Brown. Too many names, by the way. Yeah. Stick to two. <laughs> Millie Brown. Um, so go to jackwhitehall.com go see this man he's going to be touring all over the place Austin, Texas he'll be there in the south that's part of it Chicago go see my boy that's my city support my boy Jack go see him New York uh, you go to jackwhitehall.com see all the dates um, we end the show the same way with one word or one phrase you're going to look into that camera and you're going to say one word or one phrase it ends the episode it's going to be cemented in history one day the Smithsonian is going to call and say give us a compilation of all the one word one phrases and I'll say no thank you this is for my private collection uh, so whenever you're ready one word or one phrase go ahead Aga you that creature in the ginger beard sturdy and ginger like that